Today in our 2016 Chevrolet Equinox, you're going to be taking a look at, and I'm going to show you how to install, the Roadmaster Fuse Master Fuse Bypass Switch for Towed Vehicles, part number RM-76517. In the Chevy Equinox, you have to remove a fuse when you're towing it. Otherwise, you wear down your battery because your key has to be in the ignition and in the on position, or accessories on position. This is going to eliminate that. This is going to allow you to have a button that you're just going to push, you put it in tow mode or drive mode. What it's going to do is it's going to break that connection between your negative and your power side of that fuse. This is going to be your switch. Now this can be mounted anywhere you choose. I chose to mount it here because it's, the braking system has, to be, has it on and off and it's all part of the towing of the vehicle. So I want to keep it all close. You can see it has a drive mode and a tow mode. That's determined once you have it installed. You'll go through some testing per the instructions and it will show you how to determine what's tow mode and what's drive mode. First thing we need to do is we need to remove our fuse panel cover. Now, in the instructions, it's gonna tell you to read the owner's manual and pull a fuse inside the vehicle in the passenger compartment. However, uh, that has recently changed and pulling that fuse was not working out how it should be. So they changed it and we're gonna be pulling a fuse from out here. To remove your cover, you're just going to push the two tabs in like this and pull it off. The one we're going to be removing is the ABS module fuse, which is going to be this one right here on the ends. What we need to do is we're going to pop this cover off. Now this fuse is going to be a little bit hard, hard to get out. It could be. You know what? It takes a small needle nose pliers. Reach right down in the corner like this. And just kind of work it out. Like that. And then we'll be installing that back into our fuse holder. So next what we want to do is where we took our fuse out, we want to set our cover back in place. Mark where our fuse is. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a knife and we're going to cut that out. So we're going to be feeding two wires through there and connecting them to those two posts. I'm just going to use a razor knife. We'll just kind of score right along the outside edge where we marked it. You're going to need your fuse block, a 3 8 socket, and a Phillips screwdriver. What we're going to do is we're going to take our black wire that comes in our kit. You're going to attach it right here on the right side of the block. Left side, it was turned up like that. We'll take our screw and our nut. Secure that into place. Next, you're going to have a red fuse holder with a ring terminal. And you're going to have another small fuse holder that doesn't have the ring terminal on it. We're going to have to put one on. So you're going to get a couple of ring terminals that come in your kit. You just want to strip one end, take one of your small ring terminals, and add that to it. I'll go ahead and put that into place like that. And we're going to take the small one and put it on the bottom. Add our nut. We'll secure that into place. So right behind this panel, we, we got to get this close enough to where we can feed these through the hole in our cover. They're going to feed right through there and hook into the spot where we just took out our fuse. So what we need to do is we need to mount it close enough to get them there. Right behind this little cardboard panel is the firewall. Now, the problem I'm having is the two holes on our block here are not hitting metal in both places. So, a couple ways to mount it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this two double-sided sticky tape, stick it to it, and I'm going to put a self-typing screw on one side. That'll be sufficient enough to hold it. <clears throat> you just want to make sure when you mount it, because I tried to mount it over here, I couldn't get my cover on. I'm going to have to come over this way. Just make sure wherever you mount it, in there, 
you have enough room to get your wires through the top of your cover. So I'm going to cut out a section here. So we'll look something like this when we're done. So now let's take our two-sided tape off. You want to make sure that this area is clean. Because when you cut this, you're going to get little, little particles. So we'll wipe this off put on our two-sided sticky tape, and then we'll put in our self-tapping screw. So I have my self-tapping screw in, I have my tape on, put this back in, you can see how secure it is. <clears throat> Next we need to mount our switch. Now if you look right down here on our passenger side, this box here is for a stay and play dual braking system. Since our owner has this installed on the passenger side, I want to try and keep this stuff together because this will have to be turned on when they're towing the vehicle. Same way with what we're putting in now. It has to do with the towing of the vehicle. So I'm going to mount this right here. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it as close as I can to this area so they don't have to be reaching all over the vehicle. Everything's in one spot. And then we'll have to take our wire and we're going to wrap it behind the center section of the vehicle. And there's a grommet over on our firewall that we're going to pass it through that all these other wires are going through. That'll take us right up to where our fuse block is. Now in order to get to our fuse block, to make it easier on ourselves, we're going to have, we're going to take this panel off first, two seven millimeter screws. We're just going to pull out. Next, we're going to remove this bottom panel down here. We're gonna have one seven millimeter bolt right here. Push in these tabs here, pull down like that. We're gonna have two push pin fasteners right over here on this side. And then we're gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt straight back up inside here that we'll have to remove. Let me grab a so you can take a pick or a flathead screwdriver, trim panel tool if you have one. We'll pop that one out. Then we're going to have another one right back there. Watch when you're pulling this one off. Because it will drop down behind the panel here. And if you look right back there, that's going to be our 10 millimeter. We need to remove. I'm going to take an airline tube. You can use a wire hanger if you want. And I'm going to get it, feed it back through there. Right. And I'll take the wire here and I'm going to attach it to it. See if I can get it inside there first. So we can see all of our wiring here that's going to that G-Force controller. I'm actually going to cut the zip ties off because they're running through that grommet. I'm going to see how much I've got or how much is left on there. And I may attach this to that to help me pull it through the grommet. And if this idea doesn't work, no harm, no foul, we just throw a couple more zip ties on and we're back to the way it was. But we might as well utilize what we got to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, because I will tell you that grommet is hard to get to. And it's hard to get to outside of the car. So it looks like this red one right here is, actually either one of these are pretty long. So I think if I get it attached up in here, I may be able to get it through enough. I'm gonna run some electrical tape around it here. I'm gonna make sure you got a good solid hold on it, because when you pull it through that grommet, uh, you're basically stretching the grommet out just a little bit, enough to get this through it. So you don't want to pull the gray wire off. So now that we have our wire ran through, we're going to go ahead and reinstall our panels here. We 
we're just going to reinstall them in reverse order from how we took them out. You can see the box here. This is for the braking system that they have installed on their vehicle. Since this has to do with towing the vehicle, I want to keep it all kind of close together. Uh, so I think I'm going to put it right in this area. But what I have to do is drill the hole first so I can feed the wire and that will lock into place. Since we're, the, you have this corner and you have this small edge, I don't want to make the hole too big because if I go too, too much over this way, it's going to make my hole too big and then this won't stay in. If I go too much that way, it's going to go into that. So what I'm going to do, we'll take this. I'm going to set it up there just like that. And that's why I'll start drilling. If we use a step bit, we can slowly make the hole, try and fit it in, and gradually open it up to where we need it. Now I've already checked back here. Uh, you want to make sure when you start drilling this that there's nothing back there that you're going to hit or harm. Now we'll take airline tube, you use a wire hanger, and we fed it right back behind the center section there. We'll just tape our gray wire onto our airline tube and pull it across. Next thing we need to do is we need to test where we took out our fuse. We're going to test each one of those blades and we're going to find out which one is the hot one. Now, you want to make sure your car is in tow mode. So we'll take, you can take a voltmeter or a test light. So you can see this one on the outside here is our hot one. We're going to need to take our red wire is going to pass through our cover and it's going to go on to that outside one and then our black one is going to go on the opposite one. So now we'll take our red and black wire, we're going to run them through our cover here. And this is going to be a bit difficult to see. So now we can see, I pulled the end off of my gray wire that I pulled through. You have a black, green, red, and white. White's going to be your ground. Red and black are going to go to the uh, fuse block. And then our green wire is going to be the power that's going to run to this smaller fuse that we got hooked up. So I'm going to strip this back. I'll cut my three wires down. Uh, my black, green, and red wire down to where I can go right here and right here. My white wire I'm going to leave to length. I'm going to route it around. I'm going to connect, hook it up right to this uh, ground that the vehicle has on it already. Now we'll take two small butt connectors included in our kit. We'll put one on our black wire. red wire, put it in there, like that, again, make sure your fuse is not in the holder when you make the connection, there, and then our white wire, we'll add a ring terminal and ground it right there, and we'll take our 10 millimeter socket, remove that nut, Next, the large fuse that we took out earlier, we're going to insert it into our fuse holder here. And then our small fuse holder, we're going to insert this fuse that comes in our kit. Go ahead and close them. And now we're going to test it out, make sure everything's working properly. Our switch that we installed on our passenger side. Now what we need to do is test to figure out what drive is and what tow mode is. So we're going to push the switch one way and then we're going to test our black wire. If it registers 
makes the light come on, that means we're in drive mode. Your kit's going to come with two stickers, a drive sticker and a tow sticker. Put the drive sticker whichever direction you pushed it and your tow sticker is going to go on the opposite side. And that'll do it for a look at an installation on the Roadmaster Fusemaster Fuse Bypass Switch for Towed Vehicles, part number RM-76517 on our 2016 Chevrolet Equinox.